Hey guys, this is Drew with Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, got one of the most expensive coins in today that we've ever purchased. Um, and a lot more other cool coins to show you. We also got in that 27S. Um, and so we're going to show you a lot of nice coins in this video. Stay tuned and enjoy. Before we get this video started, I just wanted to talk about one thing uh, in particular. Uh, we had a video that we aired last time for you guys, and a lot of people were asking and under, wanting to understand why we tell you what prices people have paid for coins that have made a lot of money on coins, and you know why we tell you what we paid for coins and we make a lot of money on coins. Um, really, our goal is to inspire you to find just as good as deals as us. Uh, we want to inspire you to go to every coin show, meet every dealer, uh, just pursue the hobby more. Um, these numbers were never or, or are never going to uh, be intended to uh, steer people the wrong way or make it look like we're taking advantage of somebody else. That is, that is just what they wanted for the coin. They didn't understand it as much uh, as us. And so what we are in this business to do is to find great coins for the best price so we can pass them on to our customers. We are not here to tell people what coins are worth, what they should sell them for unless they ask us. So if we find a good deal and we pay a fraction of the price, it was because it's what the dealer was asking for it. Um, and so that's just something that we want for you guys to understand as you watch our videos. We are only doing this to inspire you and uh, we hope you guys enjoy. Now let's talk about some coins. Alrighty guys, just came over here, wanted to show you guys a few coins uh, that we picked up this weekend at uh, the Bozier City Show and show you guys some coins that we got in recently. Uh, very happy with this group. And if you guys are interested, uh, our next episode we will be showing off all these coins, have a great uh, interview with our uh, good friend Richie. He's a great dealer in Louisiana. You're not going to want to miss this episode. This this episode uh, will be uh, premiering Monday for you guys at 5 p.m. Central. But let's get back to these coins. A lot of great ones here. This is a 1918S. And I did not pay these prices if you guys see them on here. This is a 1918S. Great AU55 by PCGS. The reason why I bought a few SOQs as you see here is because a lot of these have been selling very quickly for us. Um, and we're very thankful because a lot of you guys need them. Um, and, and especially with the teens like we've been talking about, we have the 17D here, 17S here, and the 19S here. Uh, to speak about this 1918S, you kind of see a few distracting spots on the obverse. Um, but we were offered this coin at an affordable price, just something that we could pass on to you guys, something for a hole filler. We know the teens sometimes are a little bit harder to come by right now, especially with a lot of eBay premiums. We just don't want you guys to pay that. Um, and we don't mind picking up great SLQs. Uh, when you flip over the coin, it just has some nice gradual circulation on the coin. A little scuff off to the left behind the eagle, as you can see. That's kind of probably what neck graded it down a little bit. Um, and that just lack of luster. If it had a more luster, I would grade this coin an AU58. But um, it is what it is, AU55. Still a beautiful coin. Uh, let me take a look at this 1928S. Kind of the same story that we're checking out with the other coin. I'd say this one is a little bit more better with eye appeal. doesn't have any spots of you know distracting parts. You know, on the obverse here, a little bit of toning between the L and the I, um, but a pretty nice coin. Really love the design on SLQs. When we flip over the coin, uh, still has some interesting kind of gradual uh, circulation and gradual toning as well. Um, but yeah, just you know, good coins for a set, especially when you're wanting to create a, a good one or affordable one for your for your collection. Sometimes you just can't get everything in mint state. You want to kind of work from you know a VF territory or an AU territory. Are you guys enjoying this video so far? I mean, we got great coins we're showing off. We have, you know, a little bit of knowledge that we're giving as well. We hope you guys are enjoying it. Like I said, if you are, leave a like um, and subscribe if you're new. We want to create videos every single week, giving out the best knowledge that we know um, possible, you know, about commemoratives, about uh, mercury dimes, anything that you might be interested in. We'd also like you guys to comment. Is there something you want us to look up? help you understand more we would be very happy to do that um, and let's just get back to the video I want to show you guys a few more coins uh, speaking of VF this is a 1917D um, SOQ graded VF35 by PCGS 
reason why I like to pick these up is because the date is still visible and it's just something that looks, you know, still has some nice eye appeal on it. The reason why I don't buy ones that are necessarily lower grade is because the date really just starts to fade. It is on a high point and people just can't see it. And when they can't see it, they just don't really get that appreciation in their mind that they have a 1917D. Um, so that's kind of a reasoning for me that why I try to buy certified coins, but also ones that have a better grade, more detail. All that is very important when you are buying for people. They just want every single part of the coin that they enjoy. They want the date, they want the mint mark, they want some eye appeal on it. They know they're not getting all the luster, but they are getting the details that do matter. This is a 1926 uh, SLQ graded AU58 by NGC. You can really tell by the luster here that this coin has, um, you know, this coin is an AU58 grade. Um, there might be some just gradual circulation on the high points here, but overall the toning, there is a little bit here as well. So that's kind of what, you know, takes away a little bit from the eye appeal. It's not beautiful, beautiful toning. It's kind of a more of a distracting toning in my opinion. When you flip over the coin, it does have that kind of interesting dark spot there. But overall, still an interesting piece. Um, you know, sometimes you're not going to get the most eye appeal for a circulated example. Um, even with one with luster, sometimes you're just going to have to buy what's available and see what happens. So uh, if you see me being honest, I'm just being 100% honest. It's not my favorite piece just because of that spot on the reverse. But like I said, if you pay accordingly up front and you pass that deal on to your customers, they're going to be very happy with that. Now let's take a little bit of a turn here. This is the 1927S Mercury Dime. We were talking about this in the last video. My friend, he ended up paying $24 for this coin. I ended up paying him a lot more. I paid him about the market rate and I'm gonna try to get a profit out of this coin. I think this coin's accurately graded at Mint State 64. Um, you can kind of see some polish lines right behind her head. And uh, you know, for, I think there's just some rubbing um, there's no circulation, but there is rubbing for me. That's just, I don't know, it feels like it's a little bit uh, uh, far away from gem state. But I think we might want to try to give this one a go at CAC. Um, when you kind of take a look at the middle band here, it's going to be hard for you guys to see without a loop. But let me try to include a photo of the middle band. Uh, the middle band is my main, main concern uh, for full bands here. I don't think it has enough, but it is so close. And that's something, you know, that still shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, thrown out. I think that, you know, even if you have a coin that's not full bands, but it looks almost full bands, that's just something that someone likes a lot more. Sometimes you get full bands that are a little bit flatter, um, you know, something that's just a very weak strike. And people don't really attract to those as much as, uh, you know, non-full band coins that look full band, almost like this one. And if you guys were interested in what full bands means, there's a there's a band here, a band here, and a band there. They just basically have to be uh, separate, you know, separate lines all the way across uh, for it to be considered full band designation. I think this one is close, but they were grading it pretty strict back then. Very uh, interesting, uh, you know, coin overall, and I really want to see what happens with this one. I'm going to seek some professional help on this one. Cole is very good with Mercury Dimes. If you guys don't know who Cole is. I'll give you guys a link at the end of this video if it's for you guys to check out that video of him showing his coins that he picked up from the Grapevine show. But let's move on here. A few, you know, common dollars. Not everybody is, you know, buying the interesting kind of SLQs, but they're wanting to move into like Morgans. Just stuff like this, you know, uh, you know, accommodate Morgans to always have a nice home for us. Very fortunate to be able to pick some of these up. This one has some gradual toning around uh, the date here. You can see by that red and green, a little bit of Christmas colors here. Nothing too crazy about them, but you know, just interesting pieces uh, for someone that's starting out collecting. They're not going to pay too much for them, and you know, you're just getting, you know, you're buying a coin that's, you know, not, has nice luster or interesting toning. That's kind of where I was going with on those. This is a 1909 uh, Indian head scent, great MS64 red brown, and as you guys can tell. You know, I love rattler holders. Rattler holders are my bread and butter. Um, they're just something that makes me very happy about the hobby. I love the coin history, and I also love PCGS's history. Um, this coin has a little bit of a balance between red and brown, as you can see. I think it has a very light fingerprint on the obverse here. When you flip it over, it has a little bit of brown on the details, but still, overall, a decently decent red coin, as you guys can see. I'm not sure if this coin would cack, but 
very happy to be able to get it in. And since CAC is down, we're probably just going to be offering this outright to somebody who would be interested. Um, this is a 1917S SOQ. You know, another one where you can kind of see the date there. It's almost fully visible. Uh, and the mint mark is also there as well. Uh, you know, just, just something that people like, an early date SOQ is something that you really can't go wrong with unless it's very unattractive. Um, and I think this coin a long time ago has been dipped or has some very light old cleaning. That's just from my observation, um, but they still give it, a, you know, a grade over time. Um, and some people ask, is, is, you know, is old cleaning bad and will they, um, you know, will they hurt you for it? Will they give you a details grade? It really all depends on the severity of the cleaning. Um, if the cleaning is harsh and bad and is very obvious, they're going to say harshly cleaned or cleaned and they're not going to give you a numerical grade. But if there's some old gradual light cleaning on the coin, they actually do pass it. So that is something for you guys to consider uh, with coins like this. But now let's get to some of my favorite coins of the video. Haven't showed this one off yet. This is the biggest one of the video. Um, spent a lot of money on it and you guys are going to enjoy it a lot. Uh, we are getting into commemoratives a lot more. I do think that they're going to do very well this year. I bought this Delaware commemorative, graded MS65. It has that thicker holder, as you guys can, sell, can tell. Um, and it has that really beautiful red and orange toning on the obverse. I love how the ocean, I love how the sea and kind of, you know, it's red. And then I love how there's that kind of difference between that and the boat. I just enjoy the design overall. And you can kind of see that toning is going on the uh, reverse as well. I don't know. I, I never really thought of Delaware as a pretty design. But then when I got this coin in hand, I was very happy about it. Uh, here is a 1925S California commemorative. As you guys know, we love Cali's, and Cali's are hard to find at right now. I've been trying to find some, and I ended up paying a premium for this one just because it's very nice and blast white, and nothing nothing wrong with the coin whatsoever. But when I look on eBay, it's just something I can't find, can't even touch, especially with people that put prices on there that are way too expensive. But this one was offered to us by a friend on Instagram. Uh, very thankful for him, and hopefully someone uh, in this video really enjoys this one. I really love Callies. I have two of my, of my own in my collection. Uh, here is something interesting probably you guys don't know too much about. I know a little bit about uh, myself, but this is a 1921D uh, Mercury Dime Graded Fine 12 by PCI. PCI, I think, has the first ever kind of true views look to, to coins. As you can see, there's... The fine 12 uh, 1921D dime there, and it's uh, you know re reciprocating photo or the photo that they used uh, of this coin. Um, it's just an interesting piece to me. Um, people that collect older stuff like this, older pieces of numismatic history. I thought it was pretty neat, got it for an affordable price. And this is just kind of people's way of authenticating if they have the right coin in the right holder. Uh, you know, PCI took a, a photo of this coin and it just says some type of you know security just so you guys have uh you know sleep well at night knowing that you guys got the right coin it's not something that's fake very cool but let me show you guys this insane piece right here this is an 1861 half dime graded proof 64 deep cameo and the interesting part about this coin is that we purchased this one a few days ago and this is the only one in proof, uh, this is the only one in proof decam. So deep cameo is just basically the highest tier that you can get in terms of, um, you know, the fields and the mirrors, as you can see. Uh, and so there's actually a thousand of these minted, and we ended up picking this one up for actually a little bit more than what they say retail is. But what's pretty cool about this coin is that out of the a thousand that were minted, this is, like I said, the only one in Decam currently. So anybody that's looking for it, they can find it with us. It's just something that we're trying to kind of play a big move on, try to offer you guys something that's very interesting and um, just a really rare coin. I normally don't touch old proof stuff unless it's extremely rare or has a good price. And this one just is very rare. It also is a Civil War date. So very ecstatic about this coin. I couldn't be more happy. Uh, and, you know, I don't think it's been to CAC yet. We might send it to CAC or we might put it up. Uh, I hope you guys really do enjoy this coin. It's just, I mean, it, it, it just blows my socks off. I am so thankful just to be able to hold it. I know that we can't keep stuff like this, but 
just an amazing coin. I hope you guys do appreciate it as much as we do. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Uh, very happy that you guys are all still here. Let's uh, roll it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. It really helps us out. It reaches more numismatists. We just want to create a community where everyone can come together and enjoy some coins. Subscribe if you're new and uh, comment down below. We'd love to know what you think of the coins, what you think of the episode. What do you guys think of getting good deals at coin shows? All of that is important. We really want your feedback. But until next time, we will see you guys in the next one.